Hello, my name is Amelia Trong and I'm a senior at Holt High School in Wentzville, Missouri, and I want to share with you my project analyzing genes related to reactive oxygen species in Stylophora pistillata corals under short-term thermal stress. Climate change is causing corals to die at a devastating rate. This death is the result of the disruption of the symbiotic relationship between corals and algae called coral bleaching. By the 1980s, mass bleaching events used to happen once every 25 to 30 years but now they're occurring about once every six years, and that rate is expected to increase. Coral are then unable to full, fully recover from such frequent bleaching events, and that's leading to massive decreases in reef coverage. Between 2014 and 2017, more than 75% of coral reefs experienced bleaching-inducing heat stress, and nearly 30% of reefs experienced mortality-level heat stress. According to CNN, coral reefs could be extinct by 2100. According to Business Insider, it could be 2050. And according to Forbes, about 70 to 90% of coral reefs could disappear within just the next 20 years. We cannot afford to lose this ecosystem and the biological diversity it holds. It is commonly believed that the overproduction of reactive oxygen species, or ROS, by the coral symbionts is responsible for bleaching, but details of this topic are still under investigation. A better understanding of the progression of ROS production over time in relation to other bleaching factors could benefit future studies of coral bleaching. Short-term thermal stress is reversible for some coral species, which might indicate that the widespread bleaching of late can be reversible. But a more detailed study of this ecological microsystem is needed to understand what measures could be done to stop, slow down, or reverse this process. Before I tell you about my analysis, there are several terms you may need to know. Firstly, I've been throwing around the phrase reactive oxygen species, or ROS, but what are they? ROS are highly reactive molecules that can cause cell damage or death if built up in the cell. ROS are the cause of the next term, oxidative stress, which is a term for when those ROS build up in the system, which is in this case the coral, and the coral is then unable to detoxify itself and repair the damage caused by the ROS. The next term is oxidoreductase, and that's an enzyme that helps to reduce oxygen into a less harmful compound and mitigates the overproduction of ROS. And then lastly, we have log 2 fold change, which is the data that I'm working with. This is a quantity that compares gene expression values and can reveal if a gene is up or down regulated. To undertake this project, I, re I reviewed literature in, th in this field and found that the latest projects utilize molecular signatures for microarray and next-generation sequencing data to study this phenomenon. As a result, I see that the current understanding of ROS is that it's the trigger of bleaching, and specifically in this study, is a result of increased temperature from 24 to 34 degrees Celsius over a 10-day period. At the molecular level, this steep increase in temperature leads to a cascade of bleaching-related processes in the algae and the coral itself. To better understand this phenomenon, I wanted to collect raw sequencing data that would, that would allow me to analyze gene expression patterns of genes related to reactive oxygen species in Stylophora pistillata corals under short-term thermal stress. Now, I knew from the beginning of my project that I wanted to research corals, but the way of going about it was still a big question. As much as I wanted to work with physical coral, I quickly learned that they were difficult to care for, and that it would be nearly impossible for me to set up an environment for them at school with us being taken in and out of quarantine. I couldn't go to a lab because of COVID restrictions, and no sane fish tank owner would let me tamper with their tank to induce possibly mortality level stress on their corals. So I turned to bioinformatics with the hopes of discovering new findings from existing data. I went to the National Center for Biotechnology Information's Gene Expression Omnibus and found 179 datasets related to coral heat stress. Out of the 179 datasets, 18 described gene expression using microarray or high-throughput sequencing gene expression studies. I collected eight datasets that were relevant to my problem statement and performed exploratory analysis. In the exploratory analysis, I found that samples can be separated by temperature levels, so I defined my hypothesis that there are genes that will be up or down reg regulated in low and high temperature environments for a broad range of different corals. After exploring the datasets, I selected the dataset GSE47779, taken from the publication Gene Expression Profile of Heat Stress in the Red Sea Coral Stylophora Pistillata by Moore Landall et al. In that study, the Stylophora Pistillata coral are separated into four different groups and exposed to four different temperatures, 24 degrees Celsius, which is the control, and then treatment groups 28 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Celsius, and 34 degrees Celsius, which I'll be referring to as 28, 32, and 34 respectively. In their study, they use expression profiling by microarray to clarify the cellular pathways that are active during short-term heat stress.
My goal was to use their data to identify the amount of differential expressed genes relating to bleaching to find a correlation between specific reactions and different temperatures. From the data set, I searched for genes that were differentially expressed with a threshold of 0.05 p-value and above a 1.2 log two-fold change. Then I annotated the genes for ontology function with Uniprot and filtered for genes relating to bleaching for each sample group comparison. Using the gene ontology information, I searched for the key terms oxidative, oxidoreductase, and repair. I chose the terms oxidative and oxidoreductase because I believed that they would reflect the coral's negative response to bleaching. I chose the term repair to reflect how the coral was reacting to being damaged. The results show an increase in the amount of differentially expressed genes from, tw from the 28 to 32 treatment temperatures, and a small decrease in the amount of differentially expressed genes from the 32 to 34 treatment temperatures, giving an indicator for when significant change starts to happen in coral bleaching. I conducted t-tests with a threshold p-value of 0.05 to compare the results for each filter term for both the upregulated and the downregulated data sets. The results supported the observation of a stark contrast between the number of genes differentially expressed from the 28 treatment groups compared to the 34 and 32 treatment groups for all the filter terms of the upregulated genes. When comparing the 32 and 34 treatments, the only filter term that yielded a p-value below 0.05 was oxidative. When looking at the downregulated set of genes, the oxidative term had a significant difference in the 28B32 treatment groups, as well as the 32B34 treatment groups, but not for the 28B34 treatment groups, possibly indicating that the, related, the oxidative-related responses for the treatment groups 28 and 34 were similar to each other, but different from the treatment 32. None of the other comparisons of the downregulated genes yielded a significant p-value. Even though next-generation sequencing provides a greater dynamic range for studying gene expression and allows for more accurate measurements of gene expression changes, microarray data can be analyzed more easily due to the lack of annotated coral genomes and gene function. In literature, additional factors that affect a coral's bleaching tolerance, such as genetic background of corals, prior exposure to thermal stress, additional microbes in the microbiome, and their influence on the algae and corals are mentioned. The study did not consider these factors, and additionally, this particular study was only three to five samples per condition, so it's not as comprehensive as I would like it to be. In the article which produced this data set, the authors wanted to understand gene expression pathways, gene pathways associated with heat stress. When I started my analysis, I already had a specific question about the relationship between coral and algae in mind, so I focused on a different aspect of the response to heat stress. Both this study and the original study found that the reaction to heat stress began during the 32 treatment, but the original study found that the reactions intensified significantly with the 34 treatment, while this study found a slight decrease in reactions. This variation in results could be due to multiple different factors. Firstly, the original study took into account all genes, while this study only focused on specific groups of genes. Any genes that, secondly, any genes that cannot be annotated with Uniprot were omitted from the study. And lastly, analysis for this study was performed manually using Excel, which could have led to mistakes and omissions that should be looked into. Researchers who study corals and coral bleaching are working to annotate more coral genomes to allow many more researchers to be able to ask these important questions about bleaching and how it works. In the future, I'd like to learn more about different analysis methods and stream on them so I can rely on more reproducible methods. I'd like to use a good reference genome to annotate next generation sequencing data so I can do this analysis more in depth and with less possibility for mistakes by not using Excel. Additionally, I would like to incorporate more variation in species and look at genetic data and microbiome data to show the relationship between multiple factors. I would want to learn more about molecular pathways and gene ontology terms to better understand the biology of ROS and to be able to interpret my data and design a mechanistic study that could validate my analysis. The study could identify an oxidoreductase gene and compare gene expression in response to different temperature treatments for a group with the oxidoreductase gene silenced and one with the gene not silenced. So what have I learned from this project aside from the results of my analysis? I've learned how to create pipelines and analyze, to analyze gene expression data, how to interpret volcano plots and PCAs, how difficult it is to annotate coral genes, genes and how to use Excel. I've learned that coral are terribly complicated organisms, that so many different aspects can affect their health. Temperature, pH, microbiome, symbiont clad, history of heat stress, coral genome, and symbiont genome and that, as relevant and pressing as this issue is, there's still so much we don't know. We still don't know exactly what is causing coral to bleach at a molecular level, what specific process is triggering them to bleach. 
There are some really great and in-depth hypotheses about the possible mechanisms of bleaching, but for now, unfortunately, they're still just hypotheses. More importantly though, I've learned that as bleak as the future of coral reefs looks right now, there are many dedicated researchers and scientists who are working to prevent and relieve the effects of coral bleaching. So what should we take away from this project? Based on the variation between the results of my study and the results of the original study during the 34 temperature treatment, the response of coral under extreme heat stress should be looked into more deeply. I want to give special thank yous to a couple people who helped me with my project. Firstly, I want to thank Ms. Hess for supporting me every step of the way and going out of her way to help me at times when I doubted I'd be able to complete this project. I also want to thank Mr. Brodsky and Pine Biotech for helping me learn all the bioinformatics topics that went into this project. Here are my references. And thank you for your time. Do you have any questions?